Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for a look at our new Modbus Client Features, or Modbus Master Features, available in the Consolidator Plus Enhanced Modbus Feature Package. Before we get started, a couple of bookkeeping items. As you may have noticed, everyone here today is in listen-only mode. That means that essentially you are all muted. However, if you have questions during the course of the webinar, I would ask you to type them into the chat box that is most likely in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Uh, there's just too many people on the line today to have this many open phone lines and still have people be heard. So I thank you for that. Secondly, I'd like to address the most common questions we get at these webinars, that being, can I get a copy of the video and can I get a copy of the slides? The webinar is being recorded, and you will get an email next week with a recording of this webinar. These slides will also be made available to you in PDF form, so everything you see or hear today will be sent out to you next week for you to review yourself or share with your colleagues. With that, let me introduce myself. My name is Joe Ryan. I'm the VP of Sales and Marketing at Precision Digital. Uh, I've been design, everything from designing to marketing and selling uh, industrial instrumentation products for over 15 years now, and I've got some extensive uh, experience with Modbus products, especially here at Precision Digital and in our particular products. Perhaps you can share a little bit about yourself. Let me know if you are one of our industrial distributors or perhaps you are a user of these kinds of products located in one of these industries or another. If you do go ahead and check other, I would ask that you tell me what that other is. Maybe it's one we want to include on future lists. All right, thank you very much. And it looks like most of you are industrial distributors. But for those of you who are using these products in the field, I think this will be very uh, valid for you as well. My second question to you is how familiar you are with the Consolidator Plus. This will help me know how in-depth to go in a review of that product. Is it something you consider yourself an expert on? You've had a chance to train on it with us personally, perhaps? Maybe you're familiar with it. You've, you've used it in an application or you've only seen a little bit about it, maybe you have no idea what a Consolidator Plus is. And unexpected, or, or not surprisingly I should say, uh, it turns out that most people, wow, some real round numbers here today. Uh, see, it turns out that most people are familiar with it, they maybe know a little about it, but there's not many experts out there. Similarly, there's not many people out there who don't know anything about it at all. So we'll do a real brief review of it just to remind people about it, but we won't spend too much time just reviewing the product in general. So what are we going to look here? What are we going to look at here today? Well, we're going to take a quick look at the basics of the Consolidator Plus multivariable controller. Then we're going to look at what comes in this new Modbus Enhanced Feature Package really describe what the client or master features let you do, as well as our snooper and our spoofer modes. We'll see how to program and utilize those uh, with actual shots of the screens. And then we're going to watch a live demonstration with a Consolidator PDD9000 demo unit. So what is a Consolidator Plus multivariable panel mount controller? Well, that's a great question. And you actually see it up here on the screen. In this case, it's showing you four process variables in color. And you can bring in up to uh, 28 to 4 to 20 milliamp signals into this. You can get a, a variety of mixes of analog inputs, pulse inputs, relay outputs, 4 to 20 milliamp outputs. And all of those 4 to 20 milliamp outputs and inputs all come with their own isolated 24 volt DC power supply, which is great because it allows you to have all of the loops connected to your Consolidator Plus on their own isolated networks. It has RS-485 and Ethernet, and Ethernet connectivity, which means that you can use all of the features that we're going to talk about here today on your RS-485 network. And then you can have an Ethernet network connected, so you can connect to it with Modbus TCP IP to pull data out to a remote system. Now there is a lot that the Consolidator can do, and I really can't go that much in depth into it here today, or we would be here for a webinar just for that. But if you're interested in learning more about it, especially once you see these additional Modbus features, 
I'd ask you to reach out to us. We have plenty of training material. We have demo units. We have webinars just on the Consolidator Plus. And I think that if, if today's features look interesting to you, the more you learn about it, the more you're going to like them. So that's all I'm going to have to say about the Consolidator Plus in general. And with that, we're going to jump right into what are these enhanced features on the, in the uh, Consolidator Plus's Enhanced Modbus Features Package. It really comes with three feature sets. And that's the client or master capabilities. Many of you are probably familiar with the term master and slave for Modbus communication. Recently the, those have been rebranded uh, as client and server. And so though it is now called the client, I'm putting in parentheses the fact that, that that's the old terminology for the, the master configuration. Then we have the packet sniffer functionality or snooper functionality which is something that we actually have on other Precision Digital products, and it's possible that some of you have heard of that before. But now it's in the Consolidator Plus package, which makes it much more powerful. And then we've got a new feature, which is the ability to assign multiple addresses and customize registers in what we call our spoofer mode. And that may not yet mean anything to you, but we're going to take a good look at that so that you understand it before you leave here today. One thing you can help me understand is what is your level of knowledge with Modbus? Do you consider yourself a Modbus expert? You've worked with it all the time. Or well, maybe this is really your first exposure to a Modbus product and you're just learning about it. Or maybe you have no idea what we're talking about and you're just here out of curiosity. And it looks like the vast majority of you qualify as just you know enough to get the job done. And that's great. That, that is by far the most common answer every time I talk to someone about Modbus, so uh, there's no big surprise there. So let's talk about Modbus Client Scanner Mode. This is what is likely to be the most common application for the new Modbus feature package. And to illustrate what that can do, we're going to use this example of Modbus Multivariable Level Transmitters. Now obviously there are more types of transmitters that have Modbus capability than just multivariable level. This is just a convenient one for us. The, there is really no difference as far as the consolidator plus is concerned between a multivariable level controller or reading out of a flow meter that stores rate and totals. Uh, there's plenty of reasons why you'd want to use those as well. Maybe you want to show uh, more digits of total or, or, or pull out more digits of total than you can get out of the display of your flow meter or that you feel comfortable transmitting with a 4 to 20 milliamp and its inaccuracies, and the pulses don't go far enough without noise. There's plenty of reasons why you might, for example, look at a flow meter. We just happen to be looking at level transmitters here. And so in this example, we've got each one of these Modbus multivariable level transmitters displaying the top level, the interface level, and the average temperature along the probe in four different tanks. And so in these four different tanks, I've got a total of 12 PVs or process variables that I want to pull out of here. Now if I were going to do that with 4 to 20, which in most of these cases I simply can't. Most of these transfers don't actually have three 4 to 20 signals coming out of them. But if I did, you can imagine I'd have to have uh, 12 4 to 20 milliamp lines, so I'd have to run 24 wires out of these transmitters, all of them going back to the consolidator. And that's certainly doable. I'm sure many of you have done that. But a much more convenient way to run it and to really take advantage of these Modbus transmitters is to just run one RS-485 bus line. So I've got three wire 485 running out to all of these transmitters, keeping everything in parallel. The Consolidator Plus is then set up to be the, the uh, client or the master, and it pulls out the data from each one of these transmitters, gets a response back, and once it does that, it treats it like any other process variable, any other 4 to 20 milliamp value. In fact, I could have some older transmitter over here in its own tank and be bringing in that 4 to 20 milliamp value as well. You can mix your inputs into the consolidator. And once they're in there as inputs, you can base your 4 to 20 milliamp outputs on them. You can have them trigger relays. You do all the sorts of things that you would do with those values had you brought them in with your more traditional 4 to 20 milliamp line. Now how do you set something like that up? Well, it's really quite easy. You just program an input for every one of those 12 process variables. 
Here, for example, you've got it named. So I've got uh, MB input 1. That's just the name that I happen to have given it, so Modbus input 1. I've got it set up to be pulled out of in client mode. Then you're going to give it the address that you're reading from and the register number that you're reading from along with the function code, the type of the byte order. These are all lookups right in the device. You assign everything on the network, a different server ID or device address, and then you look up the address or the, the register address, the function code, and the data type. Those are all just lookups based on the device you're connecting to and the data you want to read out. And then we confirm with you what the total register number is that you're going to be reading out of that device. So you've got to pick your server number, which is just what's programmed in that multivariable transmitter. And then you've just got to plug in some numbers that you pull out of a table, most likely in the back of your level transmitter instruction manual. If you know what they are, you can set up your units. Uh, because here I'm dealing with a float, I need to give it the number of decimal places in that number. And then you can assign it what you want it to do if there's a break condition. So if for some reason the Modbus communication should fail, how do I want it to behave? So in this case, we've got it set to go to a default of zero, but I have a several different options I could choose there for how it behaves. You even have input actions you can program that say, well, you know, every time I read this MB input one, I want it to do something like add it to an accumulated total or trigger an output or something like that, all depending on what your system requires. Most people are really just going to use this top part. They're going to give it a name, connect it up to the device, punch in the, the address, the function code, the type, the byte order, et cetera, right out of their device manual and be done. And after you've done that, you program it up just like you would have another 4 to 20 milliamp input. Because these are programmed up just like any other input, you can use them for our math functions, our alarms, relay control, really anything you want. If you wanted to do uh, multi-pump alternation based on that top level, you, you can certainly do that. You program it up just like any other input. The second kind of feature we have here is the Modbus packet sniffer or snooper mode configuration. And what that lets you do is read information on the Modbus communication bus without the need to reprogram anything that is already active in your system. So what, what do I mean by all that? Well, we're going to take a look at this example where we're going to take the system we just looked at. So we're going to assume for a minute that the system we just looked at a minute ago is active. I have my Modbus client over here reading out the information from these four multivariable level tanks. But this client Modbus device, this, this client consolidator, is actually in my control room. So you can imagine this is off somewhere in a building. This is my little picture of a building. There you go. So it's off in some control room. But I'd really like to have a display pole mounted in a box right next to these tanks out in the field so everyone knows what's going on there. And so to do that, I'm going to install another Consolidator Plus. I'm going to put it out in the field with these tanks. I'm going to put it inside of a plastic NEMA 4X box or in perhaps a painted steel NEMA 4 box. And I'm going to attach it in parallel with my Modbus devices. But I'm going to set it up in snooper mode because I can't have two masters. That's a Modbus no-no. You can't have two masters pulling the same information out of those transmitters. And what the snooper mode Modbus device is going to do is it's going to listen for specific information that I give it. And it's going to listen for, for that information to be transmitted down the bus. So I'm going to program it up much like I did the master or the client. But I'm going to say, look, every time you hear the multivariable transmitter from tank one respond back with its, let's say, average temperature. I want you to pull that as a PV. And every time you hear it respond back with the top level, I want you to listen for that. And when you hear it, I want you to treat that as another PV. So all it's doing is essentially spying on that network. It's looking for the information it wants going by. It's not making the request. That request is coming from the client. And it's not making the reply. That reply is coming back from the transmitter. But it snoops. It, it looks on the line and says, hey, that's the piece of information I was looking for. I'm going to treat that as an input. What's great about this and, and the real advantage of it is it lets you add remote or local indicators onto existing Modbus networks without the need to reconfigure 
either your, your slave devices out in the field or your master device doing the polling. So when this consolidator is set up in snooper mode, the transmitters don't know that it's connected. They're just responding out whenever the master makes a request. And the master doesn't need to know that it's connected because all it's doing is just sending out those requests to its slave devices and waiting on the return responses. So because all the snooper is doing is listening, you can easily tack it into somewhere. So if, if instead of, say, a consolidator plus in the control room, you had a PLC, well, you can add a consolidator to use as a, as a display now, and you don't need to reprogram the PLC at all, which we all know is a pain in the butt. So that's the big advantage of your snooper mode. So how do you program that? How difficult is that to do? Well, it's very easy. Much like the client mode, I give it a name, so I can work with it later. I set it up for a, excuse me, I set it up for a snooper mode input. Then I give it the uh, Modbus ID of the device that I want it to listen to the response from. Give it the function code and register address it needs to craft that register number. Just like before, I, I just tell it based on a lookup on the device what all of its data information is, and that's it. And it looks for that response. So in this case. Whenever it hears Modbus address device 1 respond with its register number 40,001, which it has all configured appropriately, it's going to know, hey, that's what I'm looking for. I didn't request that information. Something else, some other master did. But that's what I want to listen to and I want to treat as an input. And if anybody has any questions on that, you know, feel free to type them in. I see there's a couple already. We'll address them when we reach the end. And then the last uh, feature set here that we have is the spoofer capability. And what exactly is a spoofer? That's a great question. So this is your ability to assign multiple Modbus addresses and customize register numbers. So I'm going to break that down and just slowly talk about what we mean when we say that. So these are assignable Modbus addresses. In other words, Normally, you would have every device on the network have a unique Modbus ID or Modbus address. And so the consolidator, let's say, might be address number 100. A PLC might be address 10. And your transmitters might be 1, 2, 3, 4. That way, everything's unique. And whenever anything wants to talk to anything else, everything has a unique address that it's talking to. In addition to the sort of standard address that you would assign to a consolidator on that network, this gives you the ability to have it respond as if it were other addresses. So I can say, not only do I want the consolidator to respond to its address 100, but I also want it to be 101, 102, 103, etc. So if anything comes requesting you know, to talk to device number 101, hey, that's also you, consolidator. And then you have customized registered numbers. You see, the standard, so to speak, address for the consolidator, that address 100, has a, has a Modbus lookup table. You, you've seen these before. Uh, they are with every device that has Modbus. It's just a big table that assigns you what your register numbers are and what they each contain. So you know, maybe register 1 contains a total. Maybe register 2 contains the rate, et cetera, et cetera. But now, for these other addresses that I've created, for 101, 102, 103, I can, I can essentially build that register table. I can say, you know what, what, if you get a request to talk to device 101, and it's for register number one, I want you to respond with one of your totals. So let's say you respond with total three that you're storing. And the question then, of course, is why would you want to do that? Well, that's a great question. So let's look at this example. But instead, uh, let me, first I guess I'll introduce what we're doing here. So in this case, what we've got is we've got a PLC in the control room. And unlike before, where we had four multivariable level transmitters, now we just have a single level transmitter, or a single variable level transmitter with a 4 to 20 milliamp out that is going to the consolidator plus. We've got four of those. And so I've got four 4 to 20 milliamp signals all going into the consolidator. Each one of those is <clears throat> Excuse me. Each one of those is a level. Now, if this were the entirety of my system and I were building this from scratch, that's great. I, I program my PLC to just be the client, make a request of the Consolidator Plus, and then 
the consolidator plus responds back with the registers it needs that contains one, two, three, and four levels. So done. However, let's forget about the consolidator for a minute. Let's just pretend this wasn't here. And instead of the consolidator, when I originally built this system, let's say I had four panel meters that were hooked up to these four to twenty million addresses. Or four I'm sorry, four to twenty million signals. And my PLC was wired up via 485 to request information from each of these four panel meters. Well, each one of these panel meters would have an address, a unique address assigned to it, which we'll call 1, 2, 3, and 4. And my PLC was at address 10. Well, if I decided I wanted to replace those four panel meters with a consolidator plus, I could certainly bring in the four 4 to 20 milliamp signals. That's easy. But my PLC over here at address 10 is still trying to connect up to those four panel meters at one, two, three, and four. And I really don't want to program my PLC again. You know, I don't want to bring in somebody to start editing that code. That's incredibly expensive and time consuming. So instead, I'm just going to tell my consolidator, hey, you know what, your generic address, your regular quote unquote address, is going to be at address 100. But anytime you get a request for Modbus address one, I want you to respond with level one at a certain register, at whatever the register was of the uh, panel meter. So say if, if address 1 gets register 1 asked for, it responds with level 1. If address 2 gets register 1 asked for, I want you to respond with level 2. And so I can essentially have the consolidator pretend to be those four other devices. So from the PLC's perspective, it's still saying, hey, panel meter 1, Give me back your level. Okay, great. The level responded. Hey, panel meter two, give me your level. Panel meter two responded. So the PLC has no idea that we've now replaced those four other devices with a consolidator plus because we've programmed the consolidator plus to respond as if it were those those addresses and those registers with the appropriate information. This is great for replacing existing Modbus equipment. That old panel meters that you're pulling Modbus data out of. You've got old flow meter displays or old rate displays that you want to replace and bring all of them into one display perhaps. Anytime you want to do an upgrade, but you don't want to have to mess with your existing Modbus master programming, this spoofer mode lets you simulate all those devices still being there, but you get all the benefits of the Consolidator Plus. And you don't have to be a Modbus expert in order to program it. Looking at what you have to program there, well, all you need to do is, again, you name the channel, so you name the input so you can work with it elsewhere in the Consolidator Plus programming. You set it up to be a spoofer. You say, you know what, I'm going to feed this, this uh, output, rather, this Modbus output, I should say. I'm going to feed this an input of total 1. So anytime this is asked for, I'm going to respond with my total 1. And I want it to respond as if it's uh, address 9, out of register zero. So anytime a master asks on this bus for something from uh, Modbus address nine, register address zero, with these function codes and setups, I'm going to respond back with my total information. And that's it. You're done. And now the consolidator will act as if it's that device whenever that PLC or whatnot asks for that information. So if all this sounds good to you, if this is interesting, uh, how do you get the new Modbus Enhanced Features package? It's not standard on Consolidator Plus units. And the answer is it's pretty easy. So all you would do is you would purchase the PDK9000-M1 key for $500 at predict.com. This is an enabling key that you can enter in onto your Consolidator Plus to unlock these features. If you buy the key with the Consolidator Plus, so you, you find your Consolidator Plus model number and you buy this key, we enable it for you at the factory. But you can also unlock these features in the field on any unit purchased after February 15th. So if you were to sell one of these or buy one of these, and then you decide down the road, hey, we're going to upgrade to some Modbus transmitters, well, that's great. You can always unlock this feature later when you need it. We looked at a couple of, of screen simulations, what it might look like to program these. The nice part is you don't actually have to do any of this through the front push buttons. You certainly can. You have that option to do so, but you don't have to. Uh, you could choose to use the free uh, consolidator programming software. 
What's nice about the programming software is it connects up easily with a USB to your computer, and it makes everything easy to program using English language prompts. In other words, it's just a lot easier than, well, setting up a seven-segment display for sure. The Consolidator front panel thankfully does use all of these uh, same English language prompts, but now you've got everything just a mouse click away. And try as you might, you know, as a designer, I could say it is, it is easier to program things with mouse clicks and drop-down windows than it is using the five rugged front panel push buttons. Not to mention entering data like channel names, etc., becomes a lot easier because now you've got access to your keyboard. You can also save those configurations, which is great. So if you want to duplicate the process later or you want to make a change from what's currently known good, you can just bring up your saved file and you can start from there. You can see everything is nicely laid out, so it's very easy to understand. I mean, this is a modern piece of software, and you'll understand that when you run it. It feels easy to use. It feels very intuitive, especially for a device that can do so much. And I was serious when I said that it didn't take much to configure these. Uh, as you can see over here, you know, these are your, this is your generic Modbus settings. So if you want to just get this talking on your network, this is where you set up your RS-485 settings. You just set the mode of the consolidator, give it your baud rate, your parity, and most people don't even change the, the time delay and uh, RX timeout. So I mean, you really only have a few things to set up to get it talking on the network. Now, we have a PDD9000 Consolidator Plus demo unit. This is great for any of you out there who might want to just hold it, push some buttons, try it out before you buy, or any of you distributors out there who want to show this to your customers or even learn it yourself. Um, just getting this to review it with us, push a few buttons, and become more familiar with this product is a, is a great thing to do with it. Uh, in fact, we do have a loaner program available, if that's something that interests you, where we could send you this demo for a few days. You could take a look at it with us, and then you just move it on to either the next person in the line, or we take it back here to the factory. What's the demo look like? Well, you can see that we've put some mounting feed on a Consolidator Plus so that you can keep it there on your desktop easily. We've mounted a light and horn on there. Normally that's an accessory we make available for enclosures, but we make it available on the demo in a little bracket just to make it something you can get some feedback from. So if you want to see some relays trigger and such to see how that works, you can set it up for the light and horn. We include a PD9502 4 to 20 milliamp signal generator. That is what we use to actually generate the 4 to 20 input onto this so that you can change it and see those relays trigger. And in a minute, we'll be looking at the demo I've got here on my desk and the various screens that come with it. So once again, you get the PD9000 Consolidator Plus. You get your 9502 signal generator. You get your PDA LH light and horn. And of course, we give you all the cables that you might need to connect this up. And it all comes out to you in an easy-to-carry protective storage case, ready to just be plugged into an outlet and try it out. This is your opportunity to tell me if you're interested in the Consolidator Plus demo unit. If you're interested in perhaps buying one for yourself or getting one of the loaners that we have available, go ahead and click Yes here, and we will reach out and talk to you about that possibility. I see it looks like there are a number of you that are looking, and that's great. Uh, we'll be in touch after the webinar to review it. But we are going to take a moment right now to take a look at the Consolidator demo that I've got here. So if you'll give me one moment here, I'm going to share the Consolidator demo screen that I've got set up on my desk. All right, and you should all now be seeing the Consolidator Plus demo screen that I have here. It's not exactly centered. Let me do that for you. There we are. And if I pull it out a bit, you can see that uh, it is the panel mount consolidator. I've got my brackets on there. But I'm going to bring it in real close so that we can take a look at – oops. Sorry for that packet. <laughs> Excuse me while I try to get this realigned. All right, there we go. It's a little fuzzy, but hopefully uh, you can read what's on there. And so this is a, an example of a standard consolidator plus screen. Um, I don't have to use all that color. I've got another screen set up that's a little more basic, but color is nice and helps people understand what's going on. So we've really taken advantage of the color features here to tie our bar graph to our numbers. We've labeled the channel with a name. And then you can see, I'm sorry, the screen with a name. So the screen name is tank level tanks one to four. 
Then each channel has a name here, like tank one water, tank two water, tank three oil, etc. And everything's got units. In this case, everything's in gallons. My numbers are easy to read with commas in there, so if you get large totals, it, everything's very clear. And what I like about it too is you can see these little horizontal lines on the bar graphs. Those are the alarm levels. So as my level were to go up and enter into that alarm area, a few things happen. Uh, I have a relay triggering, which triggers my light and horn. I have the alarms on my water channels turning yellow. On my oil tank channels, I have them turn red. I get an alert in the lower right that I can press from any screen to see that, okay, I have an alarm on one of the uh, screens that I may or may not be able to see at the moment. But also, the horizontal line that marked my alarm point now has a little sidebar to it that tells me where my reset point is. So you just get tons of information available on these screens. Now we can go more into the demo in depth uh, if you'd like to get one. Um, in fact, we even have recorded webinars that cover this demo in depth if you take a look at our YouTube channel. But I'm not going to talk too much about any one individual screen, so I'll move on from there. Uh, you can set it up to display bar graphs or not. Uh, one of the great things about the consolidator is it's not an HMI. It's very easy to program. So if, for example, instead of four, four variables here with no bar graphs, I wanted to say C3, but only bar graphs. Well, that's a real simple change to make. I just go into that particular screen, I make an edit, and then what are we going to do here? We're going to delete uh, tank 4. We just don't want that on there anymore. Boom, it's gone. And then we have these little check boxes on the side to say things like, you know what, I want to show the bar graphs. In fact, I only want to see bar graphs for some reason. So I'm going to select my bar graphs only. Save that. And now when I go back to that screen, now all I have is bar graphs. I don't have anything else on there. And maybe it's not the most practical example of what you might choose to do, but it gives you a sense of how easy it is to program this and how everything resizes appropriately for the screen. So you don't have to pick font sizes. You don't have to do the screen layout. It does all of that for you. Uh, here's a tank detail screen that shows all kinds of information for just one of my tanks. So if, for example, I had a few screens showing multiple tanks, I could then have also access to these detail screens for each tank, showing me things like the gallons, the feet and inches height, the total tank height, a rate of change. In this case, I have to also have a rate of change alarm. And the transmitter output, which would be my milliamp input. You can do multi-pump control with the Consolidator Plus. That's what we were showing here is the fact that you can do, in this case, two pump control, but you can do more. We're able to display pump status, keep your run times and your cycle counts tracked. You can, in fact, you can reset those right on the screen. A little more complicated version of that might be to bring in additional inputs at a lift station showing discharge pressures and pHs and gas detection input. Maybe you just want to show big data on the screen. You just want to have large display of things like rate and total for effluent. Here I've got rates and totals showing. I've color coded them all to make it easy to connect your flow meters to your totals. Gas detection example. And this was kind of nice because we're actually showing the states of the relays with enunciation panels on here. So for example, if I get into the yellow alert area, you'll see that my vent fan turns on and my doors open and I start tracking exposure time, which the soft keys on this particular screen have to let me reset. Uh, speaking of enunciator panels, you can set those up. What I really wanted to show you is two screens away. Here's the five zone bar graph example. Those are great to replace those vertical bar graph LED meters that you might see all around certain plants. This is the screen I really wanted to show, which is a separator tank example. And the reason I want to show this one is that this is based on all Modbus inputs. Uh, by the way, I have noticed a question come in uh, asking about the lines that someone is seeing on their screen. Uh, that is just an effect of trying to show a screen on the webcam. Uh, if you see, happen to be seeing any flickering horizontal lines, I don't actually see that. The screen I see is actually very clear and bright, but low resolution, low fidelity real webcams, uh, it's difficult to get a good video of a screen. So bear with me a little bit on that one. So in this case, what we've got is essentially what we talked about in our example of Modbus client mode behavior. I've got top level 
being pulled out of a transmitter. In this case, I'm showing it as feet and inches. Then I've got interface level, which I'm just showing here as feet, just to show you that you could display your units in different ways. I've got the average temperature, which I've decided to make red, because I don't know, that's what I associated with temperature, so I thought it might be nice. Some, in other words, someone can make these whatever colors they want. And I've also got a connected flow meter. I want to know my inflow rate and my flow total that's gone into this tank over time. And so I've got instantaneous flow I'm pulling out, and I've got a flow total, both of which are just Modbus variables out of the uh, flow meter that I'm pulling. Now, how do you program that up? I really want to make it clear that this is a great product for people unfamiliar with Modbus because it's so easy to program it to pull out the information from your Modbus transmitters and flow meters. So I'm going to go into my menu here for a minute. I'm going to hit my Setup button. And we're going to go down to a Modbus input. So you see I've got milliamp inputs, pulse inputs, digital inputs, and because I've enabled my Modbus features here, I have a Modbus input screen. And these are the, all the Modbus inputs I've programmed in. So there's my top level, my interface, my average temperature, and the two flow meter inputs. And if I were to look at one of those, this is all I have to set up. It's only this one screen. Everything I need to read that top level out of that Modbus transmitter is right here. Here's my device address or my server ID. So I'm, I'm looking at Modbus ID 10. The register address is 10, which combines with my function code to spit out a register number of 30,011. So, so I can confirm right here on the screen that's the register number I'm reading, which is just a simple lookup in my transmitter. There's a table in there somewhere that will tell me, you know what, register number 30,011 contains the top level information. It's a float. It's got one decimal place. It gives me its byte order. It's also probably going to give me the units, which I can program in here, which is, which is great if I do have to do any unit conversion. And that's it. And in this case, because I'm not actually programmed or connected to a multivariable transmitter right now, uh, my default is if my channel is in break mode, I'm going to display 14.8 feet. But in, in a practical example, you'd have that display something very high or low or set it up to be an alarm. And all you have to do is just scroll through these different, uh, these different fields and enter them in. Tell it what you want the address to be. Enter in your number. It's a lookup in a table. I get down to, to what do I do in the case of a break? Well, I can hit edit, and you can see here, I can have it go into break mode, trigger some alarms. I can have it go to zero, or I could set it to some default value. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, basically six, seven. So in this case, I've got seven fields I've got to fill in, and that's everything I need to know about Modbus in order to work with those Modbus multivariable level transmitters or to work with those flow meters, or any other Modbus device. I fill in those seven boxes, and I'm done. Because now, once I do that, once I've got this Modbus input set up, everything else in the Consolidator Plus is exactly the same as if it were a milliamp input. So you, when you set up a, a channel, for example, so I want to be able to display that data, and I set up tank one water for a screen, well, in this case, I'm doing two-point linear scale, and my input is an analog input. And then I scale it up, much like you'd expect, right? 4 milliamps is 0, 20 milliamps is 10,000. Well, if I were to go look at my Modbus inputs, it's the same thing. I have a function, it's a two-point linear scale. 0 is 0, 20, in this case, 20 feet is 20 feet, because I don't need to scale it at all, because I'm reading out the number in feet. And all I do is select the input of that Modbus input I selected. So it is no more difficult to use Modbus on this than it is any other input. I want to set some alarms. Well, now I'm just looking at my channel. I don't even need to go back to that Modbus input. Once I've, once I've built my channel to be this top-level number, I just go set up a relay or an alarm, and I say, hey, you know what? Go look at top level. When it goes over 14 feet, give me an alarm, whatever I want it to be. So this is a phenomenal device for people who are not that familiar with Modbus but want to take advantage of those Modbus features. Uh, I think it's a great starting point for somebody who looks at the idea of programming a PLC and just finds it very intimidating. So with that, I thank you for giving me a few minutes to look at our consolidator demo. Um, we are going to take a couple of questions here. Uh, I know that we've got a little long at 40 minutes. I thank you for sticking with me. If you have questions that you can't stick around for or that we don't address in the next minute or two, uh, please feel free to contact me. You know, I'm happy to talk about any kind of application you may have or specific questions about how you might be able to work with this or any of our other Precision Digital products and your Modbus products. 
So don't be afraid to reach out. That having been said, let's see what we have for a couple of questions, shall we? Uh, so the first question came from John, and he has a question about the snooper mode. So let me go back to that. And he'd like to know how it's possible that I can have a device connected on the Modbus 45 bus, but the master doesn't have to know about it in order for it to display information that the master is requesting. And so just to recap there real quick, when the snooper is displaying the data, what it's doing is it's looking for the responses from the server devices. So my client makes a request of this transmitter. The transmitter responds to the client. All the snooper is doing is just listening for that response. So when it, when it sees this response go by to the master, it displays that data. It never actually talks out. It never, uh, it never receives any information directed at it. Um, it is just a packet sniffer looking for the opportunity to say, hey, there goes that piece of information I was programmed to keep an eye out for. Let me use that as an input. And so that's why you can do it without the need. That's why you can use a snooper mode unit without the need to reprogram your client. Um, that's why it doesn't need to be connected in any way to the, the server devices. It's just listening for a program response from a known server address and register. Uh, hopefully that will make it clear for you. If not, let me know. And then, let's see here. I've got a question, couple of questions from Jose. Let's see if we can answer a few of those for you. Um, can the display convert level to volume or mass by using a strapping table? Uh, the answer is yes, you can absolutely do that. You can do that on a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. You can do that on a Modbus input. Uh, I showed you a little bit um, about how you might program the, the ch input channels, so how you would actually get it to you know, display a name channel with a name and a units and such attached. Where you, one of the things that you might have noticed on there was a option for scaling. I had it set up for two-point scaling. Well, instead of two-point scaling, you'd just use multi-point scaling, and then you could build that table right into there. And that makes, that's very commonly used. Uh, that makes a lot of sense for people in the 4 to 20 world, where you might be using a 4 to 20 level transmitter to show volume or mass and some kind of a, a nonlinear tank. However, you can do the same thing with a Modbus device. Bring in the input, which is probably already in some terms of feet. You know, it's not going to be a milliamp value. You're probably going to read 0 to 20 feet or whatnot. But then you can scale those feet values right into volume or mass. So you can certainly do that. You just need to program up the table. Uh, another question you have was about calculating corrected volume. Uh, we don't do uh, corrections for like um, temperature and pressure compensation. So. If you're looking for you know, steam tables or you're looking for uh, temperature and pressure compensation, you use it as a flow computer. If, if you're using a very simple equation, then, then yes, we could do that. Uh, even a sort of moderately complex equation, we could do that. Um, but I would not go so far as to call this a sort of weights and measures or custody transfer mass flow device. Um, and then we've got uh, another question here. Um, about implementing redundancy in spoofer mode with a PLC? Well, uh, redundancy is a great question. Uh, let me bring up my graph here showing you how the spoofer mode was working. So if, for example, you still had those panel meters connected, if that's your question, and you were bringing in your 4 to 20 into both the panel meter and the consolidator, well, they can't both then also be on the Modbus 45 bus because the the PLC, if it asks for, let's say this is address 4, and this is address 4, and this is responding with register 1, and this is responding with register 1, you can see I'm going to have a conflict, right? I'm going to ask for that on the bus. They're both going to hear it. They're both going to try to reply, and now I have a problem. What you could do for redundancy is just set up your PLC to read from both locations and use one as essentially a failover. You could have that 4 to 20 milliamp signal come into my flow meter, I'm sorry, come into my panel meter and go into the consolidator, and then set the PLC up to ask for both locations specifically with their own addresses for that information. But for that, you really don't need the spoofer mode. You, you could just have the PLC program to read out of the consolidator plus. So if I understand your question, um, there's not a way I could think of, off the top of my head anyway, to sort of have it 
set up where the PLC is talking to just one register and one address. And oh, by the way, if this, this panel meter happens to fail, then well, instead the consolidator will respond. Um, that's not really how that works. Um, but it's an interesting idea. And then lastly, I've got a question from Thomas, who's asking about something I said way back in the beginning of the webinar. Uh, in the general Consolidator Plus information slide, let me bring that up real quick. I was talking about isolated power supplies. And his question is, I see you mention you have 24 volts power, isolated 4 to 20 volt, uh, isolated 24 volt DC power from all analog inputs and outputs. What's the maximum power I can get out of these inputs and outputs? So that's an interesting question. Uh, the, each one of those individual transmitter power supplies or transmitter output power supplies can provide 200 milliamps. However, the consolidator plus itself at maximum can provide 1600 milliamps. And so what does that mean? That means if I have eight analog inputs, each one of those can provide 200 milliamps of power out. However, if I have more than that, you have to derate those down so that the total power supply being provided, or total current being provided from those, the total of all those outputs or inputs of those power supplies is less than 1,600 milliamps. That, that usually doesn't happen. You know, many times somebody is just using these to power two wire devices, and so they could have eight analog inputs and eight analog outputs, and all of those are going to max out around 20 milliamps, so it's not a big deal. But if you're using these to power three wire devices or four wire devices, uh, then you just want to make sure that the cumulative power draw or the cumulative current draw from those power supplies does not go over 1,600 milliamps. Uh, I also have a question here from Mohammed about how do they update or upgrade the software for the device. Uh, so you could mean two things with that, so I'm going to just address both. Uh, if you have a Consolidator Plus already in the field and you like these Modbus features, but unfortunately, you purchased it prior to that February date, uh, prior to that February 15th date, where you could upgrade with this key. Then you'd need to return the consolidator to the factory. We would get you the newest firmware and/or enable this key at the same time. Um, if your question is, well, what happens in the future when updates happen? Well, it's really the same thing. Uh, this is not a, a the firmware in the device is not field upgradable. So if something were to happen where you know, some new feature in the future were released that you had to have, then you'd have to arrange to have that sent back in. We'd do that upgrade. We'd talk to you about what that upgrade path is, and then we'd just send it back to you. Uh, of course, the other thing you do is just place an order in advance of that. We'd ship you out the new one. You'd replace it, send us back the old one, and then we'd just give you, you know, credit or however that will end up working out for uh, the return. So th you know, there's a couple different ways it could work out. There are many different circumstances that might uh, get involved there. But I would say the bottom line is to truly do a firmware upgrade, if you're not just enabling the Modbus feature key, then it does need to come back to the factory. Uh, great question from Steve, by the way, and it's a good question for us to go out on as we are uh, approaching 1150 here, is can the Modbus server registers be mapped to TCP IP? And that's a great point. They cannot. You know, as a reminder, all of these advanced features are only available on the RS-485 bus. Now, that's great in that you can have the RS-485 bus connected up doing all kinds of crazy my bus things uh, as, a, as a master or as a spoofer or a snooper. Uh, but then you can have your Ethernet mod bus connected up to the cloud, let's say, you know, getting the information pulled into the company ERP system or whatnot. Um, however, it also means that you can't just plug in only the Ethernet and have it start snooping on other things elsewhere in the world through the Ethernet port. So all the features that we talked about here today are only available on the RS-485 connection, but you can have that happening, and you can also be having the, client, the Consolidator Plus respond as a server to a client somewhere else connecting to it through Modbus TCP IP. Well, I would like to thank you all. You had some great questions. I appreciate you sticking with us. I know we went a little long, but I hope that this was a real interesting experience. I hope you see some advantages of using the Consolidator Plus, and I'd like to hear more from you about what you think. So when you leave here, there will be a brief survey some of you may see. If you do, I'd really appreciate you taking a moment just to fill it out, tell us what you thought of the webinar, 
and what other topics you might like to see from Precision Digital. So once again, I thank you for your time. I hope to hear from you soon, and I wish you all a good rest of your week. Thank you very much.